So just like it was with arithmetic series, perhaps there was a nice formula that we could utilize to find the sum to n terms of a geometric series. Now, we know that a geometric sequence will start with a, and the next term, if I'm turning it into a series, will be a r, and then I'd have a r squared, and so on. Okay, so that is what we can write as our sum. Now, ultimately, okay, we're going to get to the point where we get to the nth term in the sequence. So if I'm writing this as the sum to n terms, I'm going to get to a point where I get to the nth term a r to the n minus 1. So if I go up to a r to the n minus 3, the next term would be a r to the n minus 2, and the last term would be a r to the n minus 1. Now, what we do at this point is we write down the same sequence again, but multiplying both sides of the equation by r. Okay. Now, this will become a little bit clearer as to why we would do this in a mo. So, multiplying every term by r, I get a times r, so a r. a r times r is a r squared. a r squared times r is a r cubed. Then a r to the n minus 3 times r is a r to the n minus 2. a r to the n minus 2 times r is a r to the n minus 1. And finally, a r to the n minus 1 times r is a r to the n. Now, both of these lines include a great many repetitions, okay? Ones that are in both lists. The only ones that aren't in both lists are a and a r to the n. So if I subtracted one from the other, then I would cancel out a whole host of terms. So if I do um, r s n take away s n so this line take away that one then i'm going to get a r take away a r so they cancel a r squared take away a r squared they cancel the cubes will cancel the a r to the n minus 3 will cancel they'll cancel they'll cancel and i'll be left with a r to the n take away a Okay, now both sides of that equation can be factorized. So I could factor the Sn out of this, these two terms and have r minus 1 left. And factoring the a out of these two terms, I get a lots of r to the n minus 1. Now dividing both sides by r minus 1, I am left with this formula. The sum to n terms is a times r to the n minus 1 all over r minus 1. And you don't have to have it that way because you could multiply top and bottom by minus 1 and subsequently what you'll get is a lots of 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So both of these forms are synonymous. Okay? Um, this one is often easier to work with if the r is uh, between minus 1 and 1. Or um, usually you end up using it if r is less than 1. Okay? Really to avoid a negative sign in the denominator. So if r is larger than 1, we would end up using this one here. Okay? Now, clearly, this sum doesn't work if r is 1. Okay? So r cannot be 1 in either of these cases. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that's how we do it. That's how we build up this new formula that we can use and utilise.
So what we want to do is we now want to put in a little bit of practice into using uh, this summation formula um, along with some sigma notation.